welcome back friends now let's talk about uh, the different types of enzyme inhibition we'll be seeing the enzyme inhibition mechanisms and we'll also see the different types of graphs which are michaels maintain plot as well as the double reciprocal plot to understand about how in different types of enzyme inhibition uh, the km and the vmax are changing with the time so let's put it in a way the enzyme inhibition can be divided into three different parts first one is a competitive inhibition second one non competitive inhibition and the third one uncompetitive inhibition now if you look at the guide in this in this table we'll be seeing the cartoon guide to view and you'll we'll also see the equation and the description of each of this process in the competitive inhibition substrate competes with inhibitor for the binding to the enzyme cleft or enzyme active site cleft so there is a proper competition going on between the substrate and the inhibitor to binding the active site of the enzyme okay now the description and the equation can be given like enzyme can interact with substrate to form enzyme substrate complex if it's formed then substrate will be converted to the product now inhibitor can also involve in interaction with the enzyme and they will form enzyme inhibitor complex which will not form any product and the enzymes will be occupied with inhibitor and the process will be prevented now in this case the inhibitor binds to the free enzyme only once the enzyme is attached to the substrate enzyme substrate complex is formed then no longer the inhibitor can be able to bind now this in inhibitor competes with the substrate and if we start increasing the substrate concentration the inhibitors will not win because higher substrate concentration will outrun the ability for the inhibitor to bind to the enzyme so we can we can actually change and reverse uh, the opening of uh, or, or the attachment of enzyme with the inhibitor while in non competitive in this case we'll see two different regions of the enzymes active site and other modification sites now substrate can easily bind with the active site which will be required for them to convert into the product but inhibitor can bind to some other site some regulatory site or some allosteric site of the enzyme in a different site obviously so inhibitor can bind with enzyme substrate complex inhibitor can also bind with free enzyme so if inhibitor binds with the free enzyme substrate can also bind in some cases but cannot be converted into the product which is this one and sometimes substrate cannot be even able to bind once the inhibitor is in place to the enzyme and if enzyme and substrate is forming enzyme substrate complex still inhibitor can bind to the separate region and that will prevent the enzyme to to convert the substrate into the product so what we see this inhibitor can bind with both free enzyme as well as the enzyme substrate complex and increasing substrate concentration cannot overcome the inhibition like the competitive inhibition now the uncompetitive inhibition in this case also we have the enzyme with two different sites listed enzyme and the substrate can interact with uh, the active site but in this case inhibitor binds with the free enzyme that is not allowed normally so inhibitor cannot freely bind with the enzyme so once substrate bound to the enzyme then only inhibitor will be able to bound to the enzyme so the only way this uncompetitive inhibition is possible is once the enzyme substrate transition state is formed because inhibitor in case of uncompetitive inhibition can only bind with the enzyme substrate complex so it will bind to the enzyme substrate complex and form eis in that will block the enzyme to convert the substrate into the product so in this case the inhibitor binds to the enzyme substrate complex only it it will not be able to bind to enzyme freely and increasing amount of substrate favors the inhibition by the inhibitor so if you increase the substrate that will be winning for the inhibitor not for the substrate now if you look at the graph that depicts all these different changes in different types of inhibitions it will be much clear for us to understand let's look at here 
in the graph we will put these three competitive non-competitive and uncompetitive we will look at two different types of plot one is the direct plots or the Michaelis Menten way of the plotting and then another one is the double reciprocal plot to get the log values and straight lines so let's look at for the competitive inhibition in all these graphs you will see for the direct graphs you will see in x-axis the substrate concentration and y-axis will have the velocity that's v0 now you'll see a graph that starts with exponential growth and goes to a saturation that's quite normal graph the ultimate limit of the saturation reaches the maximum velocity known as vmax and the substrate concentration at which half of the vmax is received is known as km that is the substrate concentration at which half vmax is achieved this is true for all the type of graphs that we are going to see so i will not explain that again but let's see here this is for a normal enzyme catalysis reaction but now if we add a competitor or that's inhibitor or i you'll see the graph slot shifted a little now it's a little below over there so what we can see here the km value changes it increased so km value increases so the affinity decreases because you know km represents the affinity so km value increased and in that case the affinity for the enzyme towards the substrate will decrease and the vmax if you look it remains unchanged why because if we keep on adding substrate concentration that will replenish the effect and it will also reach the vmax now here they might have some delay to reach the vmax but they can ultimately achieve that goal if we start increasing the substrate concentration now the double reciprocal plot will also give us the idea about both normal and competitive inhibition plants the normal one is the purple competitive inhibition is the dotted line with the pink now there is not much difference between these two graphs just this graph is representing the values in the reciprocal format that in the x-axis we have a 1 by substrate concentration in the y-axis we have a 1 by v0 that's the only thing that we have to change now if you look at this graph it also tells us that the value for km here is minus so 1 by minus uh, minus 1 by km so uh, it's going towards it that means that it's increasing it's not decreasing it's increasing in that sense so km increased vmax remains unchanged and the vmax is the intersect between this graph and the y-axis which remains changed by the way both these graphs are helpful to depict the positions but sometimes these double reciprocal plots are clear representation of what's going on with the inhibition so if you want to remember you can look at this double reciprocal plot especially for remembering the inhibition processes now let's look at the look at the non-competitive inhibition again in the substrate concentration in the x-axis velocity v0 at the y-axis we get the maximum velocity and the km and now if we add the inhibitor you see the vmax is also changed but the km also remains the same so the km will remain same like the previous time but the vmax will be changed because we know in non competitive inhibition we cannot reach the vmax anymore because the inhibitors are blocking free enzymes as well as they are blocking enzyme substrate complex so even if we increase the substrate concentration it will not allow us to reach the maximum velocity that the enzyme could have reached the same thing you can also look here in in the plot of double reciprocal where you see the the km value that is the intersect at x axis it remains unchanged but the the intersect that is in the in the y axis that is a vmax is getting changed and it's kind of uh, decreased because it's in reciprocal it will show upward that means decrease now in uncompetitive inhibition if you look if you plot the inhibitor provided here you will see both the km as well as the vmax are decreased now what is the reason behind it because the uncompetitive inhibition only occurs when the enzyme substrate complex is formed the inhibitor binds only with the enzyme substrate complex and preventing it to turn the substrate into the product so in this case 
even if we increase the inhibitor content that will favor the inhibition itself even if we increase the substrate concentration instead that will favor the inhibition it will not favor the process around because if we increase the substrate the more enzyme substrate complex will form so the more inhibitor can block enzyme substrate complex so it neither can reach, reach the vmax nor the change in the substrate concentration will help us to get the change of the affinity so the km as well as vmax both will change and both will vary which we will see here the graph in the reciprocal plot will be the lines the inhibition uh, for uncompetitive one will see a parallel line going through that means the intersect for both vmax as well as km are getting changed and both of them the graph is completely on the top and it's reciprocal so that means it's decreasing in both vmax as well as the value for km so if you look at the graph here in the top the direct plots and if you compare it with the double reciprocal plot you will see it's more visually appealing and visually conceptually clear uh, for the double reciprocal plot to understand because double reciprocal plot is telling you about how exactly they are differentiated which is not clearly depicted by the direct plots though let's look at some advantages of uh, competitive inhibition and how exactly we use competitive inhibition for controlling different diseases and developing new drugs to fight against different infections and diseases in our body so we know competitive inhibition occurs when the inhibitor can compete with the substrate for binding with the active site of the enzyme so let's say in this case the substrate is succinate and the enzyme that we're looking at is succinate dehydrogenase and succinate is converted to its product now the succinate dehydrogenase enzyme can be competitively inhibited by other factors example glutarate example malonate and oxalate you see for competitive inhibition most of the cases inhibitors need to have a close resemblance in its stru structure with the substrate and that's true because if you look at the comparison of the structure of succinate with glutarate you will see this is a very similar structure in between again the structure of malonate with succinate also similar oxalate is a little uh, but the, they also have the co group at the end that's a characteristic group that should be present to compete for the catalytic site of succinate dehydrogenase with succinate so this is one example of competitive inhibitor while the presence of this any of this competitive inhibitors uh, can actually prevent the binding of succinate to the succinate dehydrogenase and can prevent the process although if you increase the concentration of succinate uh, that can remove the inhibitors and allow the process to work allow the conversion of the substrate to the product now example of utilization of such competitive inhibitors and producing drugs are very common for example the sulfa drugs that we utilize which is an anti inflammatory drugs uh, with which uh, they for example those drugs help in preventing different infections now if you go with the precursor molecules inside the bacterial cell if we talk about they produce folic acid and the precursor involved here is para amino benzoic acid or paba this para amino benzoic acid is required to convert a precursor into folic acid which will be taken uh, to produce tetrahydrofolic acid now this bacteria needs this paba or para amino benzoic acid for the biosynthesis of the folic acid and without folic acid they cannot generally survive so now we introduce a drug which structure is remarkably similar with the para amino benzoic acid if you look at here the structural differences you see only a little difference uh, between them coh and sonh2 group rest of them are same now the presence of this sulfa drug example is sulfalinamide sulfanilamide is a drug is also known as sulfa category drug these are anti inflammatory drug that prevents the inflammation and we know inflammation is caused due to the infection of bacteria at a specific point where multiple uh, multiple type of chemical events going on there now this sulfa sulfanilamide or sulfa drugs due to having the extensive structural similarity with para amino benzoic acid 
can actually compete for it and it can prevent uh, the, the production of folic acid in the bacteria. So it prevents the growth of bacteria. And the use of these competitive inhibitors is not only for the sulfur drugs but also other examples, mostly in case of protease inhibitors. The importance of protease in case of uh, mostly in many, many, many diseases, for example, Alzheimer's disease, they start creating or degrading neurons and other neuronal cells. They have proteases to degrade that. They create the plaques in the brain with the help of protease enzymes. Similarly, protease creates an important function for HIV life cycle when HIV breaks down some proteins into smaller fragments that they can use uh, to spread the infection. Now, if we design some inhibitor that blocks this protease enzyme, it can prevent its activity. And that's what is done here. We use that protease inhibitor drugs when we start using the inhibitor concentration higher than the possible concentration of the protease provided by the HIV, in that case it can prevent uh, the activity of that protease enzyme by competitively inhibit that protease. So these are some positive advantages that we exploit to develop drugs uh, to fight against infections and diseases like Alzheimer's and HIV. So if you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video and subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that. Remember sharing is caring and it also helps us to promote so that more and more students can watch this and can get benefits just like you did. Okay, And feel free to comment about the video and also if you think there are some part that we want to talk and you, we need to talk about and make videos about, you can also share your ideas. Thank you.